Ducks fans. Are you ready? You are listening to the Ducks and Pucks podcast with your hosts, Mike Walters and Eddie Jones. This is the number one home for Anaheim Ducks talk and analysis. Here we go. All right, welcome back to our show. Uh, we've got another exciting week with a lot of signings with the Ducks, uh, some other information to cover around the league with some other players, uh, a Tamu Solani wax statue that we'll talk about, and a lot of fan questions. But the uh, big news of the week, Eddie, is the signing of Kessler to a huge extension, six years, $41.25 million. Uh, what's your thoughts on this, Eddie? Uh, well, I like the signing um, because, obviously, it, it's nice to have Kessler back and you know solidified for the next – five, six seasons of, of having two top centers. So you will be able to compete, you know, for at least the next four years. Um, but I don't like the term because he'll be making that six million, you know, over six and a half million until he's 37. And that's, you know, that's a rough age to be at. He, he might still be good. It all depends. You know, some players regress. Some players can play like Jogger until they're 43. But, you know, it all depends uh, on what type of player Kessler is when he's 37 and, and to see if we won this deal or not. Yeah, I think you're correct in that assessment. Uh, a lot of the fans uh, are obviously very excited that we re-signed Kessler. And obviously, you and I agree that it's a big deal and that the Ducks needed to keep him. Um, and, uh, and I don't think uh, anybody's too stressed about the money uh, situation. You know, we're still under the cap. Uh, by about 16 million right now. Uh, you know, as of right now, we haven't re-signed uh, Silverberg and Haglin, so there's still uh, more money there. And going forward, we should be okay. Uh, you know, because Murray's pretty good about that. But like you said, the term has been the issue that some other fans have raised um, and have asked me uh, during the week. Um, you know, six years, uh, 7.8 million next year, and then 6.6 for the five years following that, all the way to 2000. 21 22 season so um you know that's one year beyond uh perry and getzloff's contract as well so i I like the contract like you said the link does concern me a little bit um you know what how he's going to be you know at 36 37 i mean that's you know usually when the athletes tend to start to decline a little bit so uh, you know i'm glad we got the deal done eddie um and i think we're gonna just have to wait and see I think the next two, three years are going to be, you know, fantastic and we're going to make a push. And um, I think some people uh, feel if we win, you know, one or two cups out of this, then then that's what we need to do to make this deal, uh, you know, be worthwhile, beneficial to the Ducks. And I don't know. What's your take on that? Do you think the Ducks have to win a cup in order for, you know, this deal to be justified uh, in the long run? Oh, yeah, for sure. If they don't win a cup, you know, it's it's, it's a little bit pointless. You know, it, it's the same with any signing, any major signing or, or re-signing that a team makes. If if you don't win a cup, you know all the signings, all the trades, all the you know the assets you gave up, it, it's not worth it in the end. And you know they definitely have to win one. I think if they win one, it's worth it. You know, obviously winning the cup is hard. If you win one, that's worth it. You win two, that's great. And then I mean, you know, the cap space will also be up. The cap space will go up in the next six years for sure. And then it might not even look that bad. Players might be making 10, 11 million, and cap could be around 80 million. And, and that his contract won't even really matter that much. So we'll have to see. Obviously, it will come in, in, in years to come. And if we win a cup next year, I think a lot of people that are, are a little bit worried about it will be happier. I, I think you're correct in that assessment, too. I think the Ducks signing Kessler you know, to get uh, one cup out of it out of the next couple of years would be great. Uh, obviously, if we were able to get two. Um, you know, he's had the right attitude, Eddie, as we talked about. And, uh, you know, looking at game six and seven when certain players – uh, against Chicago, didn't play their best, regardless if they were injured or not. Uh, we knew Kessler was giving it his all. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we, we still don't think he was even 100% uh, in the playoffs because, uh, you know, he had those elbow uh, issues where he had his uh, elbow in a wrap um, towards the beginning of the playoffs. So even when he's had a little bit of nagging things, uh, he seems to be good to go because the concern I've heard from some Vancouver fans is, hey, you know, you guys signed him to a long-term deal. But, you know, he has been injured in the past. So some of the Vancouver fans have basically told me, good luck with that signing. What, what do you think as far as, you know, his health and injury-wise? Because he said, oh, I'll be good to go. And I can't remember the exact quote, but he said, you know, I, I feel that I could play several years in this league, even um, maybe beyond this contract. Uh, well, you, you got to look at the, the amount of games he's played in his last, you know, eight seasons. He's played 82 games three times. He's played 80 
and then played 77 the other two and then 81 last year. I mean, I'm not too worried about him having injury problems. You know, he've had that one season where he was injured for most of the season. But other than that, you know, I, I'm not too worried about it. I think his, his health is fine. He's played almost, you know, he's played more than 75 games almost his whole career. So, you know, I'm, I'm not too worried. Uh, he plays hard minutes. I think maybe getting old, later on to his career, playing all these hard minutes like he did against Chicago might catch up to him. And, and then we might see more time off for him. But, you know, right now, I, I think he'll be fine for the next few seasons. And your sentiments exactly how I felt too. I don't I don't see injuries being a concern. Obviously, it's part of the game and it happens. But I think some of the Vancouver fans are, are maybe just a you know a little jealous of, of the Ducks now, along with you know obviously several other teams because uh, you know we're so loved by everybody else, and now this signing has really uh, given the Ducks a lot of love around the league. So that's kind of the take I've gotten on it too, and I agree with you. I, I think we'll be good. It'll just be interesting to see what happens uh, down the stretch and. Obviously, the Ducks are going to be a contender for several years, so it's exciting times in Anaheim and, and making this move, uh, even if it is a, a one or two year, maybe a little bit longer than we thought. It, it's still better, obviously, than saying, oh, you know, we'll just get him for another year or two. You know, it, it, you want to take him for a long time and solidify that second center uh, spot, Eddie, because now the uh, pretty much line one and two, and we'll talk about the lineups a little bit later in the show, but lines one and two are, are going to be rock solid for years to come. Yeah, and you need that in the West. Everybody hears it every year. You know, Dallas has uh, has Sagan and, and Spezza, and even Ben can play center. And, you know, uh, Edmonton's going to have McDavid and Nugent Hopkins, L.A., Carter and, and Kopitar. You know, it's it, you know it, even in um in San Jose with Thornton and Couture. So you, you got to have those two guys. You want you want to have them locked down for long term. And, you know, we've got uh, Ryan Getzloff and, and Ryan Kessler for, you know, up to the next five, six years. So I, I think we're set, and, and definitely the cup window is going to be open for a lot longer. Now, and speaking about the cup window, the uh, the Ducks made more moves this week. Uh, they got Shane O'Brien, who, uh, for some of you that don't remember, he was on the Ducks back in 2006, 2007. Uh, defenseman that played, uh, you know, 62 games, and he actually ended up getting traded before so he wasn't actually on the team when they won the cup, but uh, he comes back. Uh, tough defensive men, uh, you know, take some penalty minutes. Um, what do you think about this signing, Eddie? Uh, you know, some people asked, you know, what's the deal? Is he going to be in the top six? Is he going to go to uh, San Diego? What's your thoughts? Uh, no, he won't be in the top six. I, I mean, as of now, it looks like Stoner is going to be that sixth guy, and they're confident with him. And I mean, at his salary, making you know three over three million, you know, you'd expect that. And he wasn't terrible, you know. He had a good playoffs. Uh, a lot of people put the blame on him last season. I think in some cases it was it was unfair, and you know, I was I was one of those people sometimes as well. So I think I think he's a good number six guy, and you know, Shane O'Brien comes in to fill that maybe number seven or number eight role with with Holzer, and that gives uh you know Manson and Theodore, uh you know, almost a full season to develop in the AHL, and I, I think it's a really smart move there. I don't think they want to rush the rookies or the younger guys, so I think bringing in a more, a more veteran, experienced guy. You know, he's not going to put up a lot of points, but you know, he's going to play well defensively. He's going to fight. And, and it looks like the that's the direction they've gone. You know, I, since signing Haglin, we thought they'd maybe get more speed, but they've just gone for big, tough guys. And you know, I, I think uh, it's it goes along with those signings. Yeah, and I think like we talked about with uh, McGratton too coming in, and we we mentioned how we don't think he's going to play full time, but he may come in if if you know Jackman's injured for some reason, or obviously for playing a team you know like Dallas or the Kings that are going to play us tough, that he may come in. So, you know, O'Brien may be something similar like that too. If uh, you know if for some reason Stoner or, or you know heaven forbid anybody else gets injured on the Ducks, that maybe he comes in or. Yeah, maybe it's a matchup game too, Eddie. Maybe if it's certain teams uh, that are going to play us tough, that uh, uh, O'Brien comes in on defense and McGratton comes in on you know a fourth line forward. Yeah, and you know it's always nice to have depth. You know, come the the playoffs, you'll be able to put these guys all on the roster and and be able to switch it up if something's not working. So you you don't want to have to to throw in a, a young guy, a rookie, and and you know especially in the playoffs or even in a tough situation during the season where you need a win and. You know, he's been around the league for a while. You know, originally drafted by the Ducks, so you know, hard hard season last year in Florida playing in, in San San Antonio in the AHL for most of the season. But you know, he he knows what to do. He's been in the league for for a while, so um, you know, I'm not too worried about the signing. Plus, it's one year, so even if it doesn't work out, he's a UFA at the end of next season. Yeah, and that's been the trend too. O'Brien was signed for you know six hundred thousand, and then the Ducks also uh, re-signed Wagner and Cervoza, uh, both for six hundred thousand as well. 
and Atman for a, a three-year entry-level contract. Uh, you know, a lot of centers were signed uh, basically in this last week, and that kind of seemed to be the direction. You know, obviously the Ducks got Horkoff too, uh, you know, a little while ago. So it looks like the, the Ducks have really built back up the center position with these last uh, couple signings uh, here, Eddie. Yeah, and, you know, with Wagner and Scarbosa, you'll probably, you know, guaranteed to see them most of the, the year in the AHL. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted to see Wagner come up and, and play but you know it doesn't look like right now it looks like he's you know on the outside maybe the 13th 14th or even 15th forward so he'll probably play uh start the season in in uh, san diego and and play most of it there you know if coming up from an injury or, or if somebody's playing bad he might come up but you know those guys you'll be seeing playing there and and, and not in a little bit different situation though obviously just getting drafted in the second round uh, he's only 18 played in finland last year um you know, he could go back to Flint, Finland, but uh, the Barry Colts and the OHL also have his rights. So, uh, you know, there's some some rumors he might go play for Barry. So he's got two options there. But yeah, these are these are you know moves for the future and and rebuilding our depth at center. Yeah, which is all good. You know, obviously because uh, you know uh, William Carlson we traded away earlier in the season, so it's good to build them back up. You know, Wagner also plays wing, so you may see him squeeze in on the fourth line. Uh, as a wing position uh, next to Horkoff for some of the games. Um, that's probably what's going to happen. And we'll talk about it a little bit later when uh, Thompson comes back and, and how that's going to work out with the lineups uh, and some of the fan questions that we're going to address. Um, the uh, only other real duck news that uh, came out this week was kind of an interesting one, but um, a Finland uh, traction had a Tamu Solani wax statue that was put up, Eddie, and uh, I got a lot of funny comments about this statue. I mean, uh, you know, his uh, hands don't match the colors, and uh, his <laughs> facial expression is a little bit off. And uh, even Tamu's, uh, he, he uh, Tamu tweeted out that uh, his daughter could do better on the uh, wax statue. Uh, did you get a look at this, Eddie? And <laughs> what did you think? Yeah, it was pretty scary too. It looked like he had a, a nice tan. You know, he looked uh, had a nice spray tan before too, and. Uh, you know, it just really bad. You know, one of, not one of the ones you'd expect to see at, at one of the high-end wax places. That's for sure. So, um, I hope Timo never ends up looking like that. Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the comments from some of you uh, fans out there was, were hilarious. Uh, talking about him, you know, <laughs> looking like Rob Lowe or uh, Van Dam was some of the other comments that uh, I was uh, receiving from you know posting the article. So. Uh, it was good to get a laugh this week, and glad to see uh, you know Tamu take it with um, you know a light heart, and uh, as he usually does. And uh, he's in Finland right now uh, uh, for a little while, and um, probably come back. Uh, we'll see in a couple weeks or something to the U.S. But uh, he's over there right now enjoying his time, and uh, you know obviously it's well deserved, and we still miss him and uh, give him our best. Um, going with a lot of fan questions again this week, you know, uh, a lot of people are asking about the ducks and the moves and, um, what's going on and what are our thoughts, uh, thoughts as far as the direction of the team. Um, you know, we did all these signings again that we saw for the ducks. And one of the fans asked Eddie about to Hagelin and Silverberg and what's the deal. Why, why is it taking so long? Uh, well, we recent, we recently saw the numbers get put out and, and Hagelin got number 26 and, you know, BX said two and Horkoff 22. So I think, you know, if, um, these they take time, you know. Hagelin, you know, they gave him a number. I'm I'm sure they're expecting to re-sign him. You don't, you know, you don't give a guy a number if you don't expect to re-sign him. But, um, the, the Silverberg and Hagelin, they're, they're younger guys. Um, you know, they could be making demanding anywhere between four to even, you know, upwards of six million. It, it all depends on on what the team thinks they're worth, what the agent wants, what the player wants, and. You know, you might as well take your time with these deals. You don't want to overpay for a guy, and, and you don't want to, you know, underpay and, and insult him. So I think they'll get done by the end of July, and you know, you just got to be patient. That we there's there's a slim chance we'll lose them. So, I mean, just be patient, and, and we'll eventually get them signed. Yeah, and I think uh, like we talked about the cap space now, the Ducks are around uh, 57 million, and uh, according to uh, NHLNumbers.com, they've got about 16 million left to go. So you got to figure Hagelin's going to, uh, you know, probably take four or five million a year. Uh, Silverberg's going to get a bump, maybe two or three million. So that would put us, uh, you know, around that uh, eight, nine, you know, ten million dollar uh, range that uh, you know the Samuelis like to, you know, keep the Ducks within Eddie, and I, I think that's kind of what's going to happen. Um, at least with their contracts, and I expect I would expect probably you know maybe a two or three year contract deal for both of them. You think? Yeah, you would think so. Um, I don't think 
you know, Silverberg had a, a bridge deal before, and I, I'm sure he'll be looking for, you know, a nice pay grade, uh, pay raise after his performance in the season and in the playoffs. And, you know, Hagelin is an experienced guy coming over from the Rangers, and I'm, I'm sure he'll be looking for, like you said, maybe, you know, a two or three year deal around three and a half, four or five million. So, um, and, you know, we can afford it too. You know, uh, Horkoff and Stewart will come off the books next year. So, Jackman too, if they want to get rid of him, Holtz or Kadobin, they all come off the books, which, you know, relieves around five million in cap space. So, um, I, I think you know that gives us a room to sign guys like Sekach and Raquel and and uh, Vaughn and Dupre Lindholm for for more money. So, you know, I, anything around that price and, and term, I think, is a good deal. Yeah, and I think you're right because uh, next year that's going to obviously be, be a big issue uh, keeping all the uh, RFAs, uh, you know, being able to retain them. So we're going to have to keep that little space. Plus, you know, the trade deadline as well. Things could happen. Uh, another question we had uh, from Jimmy is uh, about the Hawks and, uh, you know, if the Hawks are still going to be, you know, a threat in the West. Obviously, um, Eddie, we talked about this the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, we've seen some players leave, uh, Sharp and Oduya and a few others. Uh, what are your takes on the uh, Hawks' uh, chances next year? Well, they're still going to be a good team. Um, you know, they still have some more moves to go. They're, they're pretty close to the cap still, even after trading Sharp. Uh, but, uh, you know, it all depends. They've got some young guys now with Marco Dano coming over from uh, Columbus and, and Tara Vinan, who had a re- really good playoffs. And, you know, losing Saad and, and Sharp is going to be big for them and obviously losing Oduya. But, you know, Daly will fill that role that Oduya fill, uh, was filling. And the defense will look pretty much the same, obviously, Crawford and Nett. Um, so that, you know, that's the same there. Uh, but the forward is going to look different. Obviously, Taves and Kane are there. Host is still there. Uh, no Brad Richards at center. Artem and Isimov will probably fill that role. You still got Kruger and Dejardin, but that's, you know, one, two, Taves, you know, franchise player, number one center, but Artem and Nisimov at, at number two, you know, I, I don't know if Teravine is ready to, to, you know, play it as a second line center yet. So it's going to be tough. It's going to be a new look Chicago team, especially if they make some more moves, but you know, they'll still be competitive. You got K- Kane, Taves, Keith, Seabrook, you know, you'll be good. They'll be good. You know, and, and we talked about Oduya and him uh, leaving, and he, he went where we thought. He went to Dallas. Uh, what do you think about Dallas? You know, Dallas is a team that looks like they're going to be pretty scary, and, and they may be able to compete for the uh, division title in the Central. Yeah, you know, they established their their top two centers last year with Sagan and, and uh, Spezza. Uh, Jamie Benn won, won the uh, Art Ross as well. Um, you know, they're going to be a good team picking up Niami, Sharp, um, you know, do you just two huge moves? You know, Lettinen was kind of you know shaky last year. They didn't have a great backup, and now you've got two starters. You, you know, Niami could be a you know, he was a starter in San Jose. He comes in, and now they can rotate whoever they want. And you know, Sharp is going to play you know po- possibly first line with Sagan and Ben, and that's a pretty deadly liner. If not, he pl- he drops down and plays with, with Spezza. So you've got two really solid lines and. You know, sort of built like um like the Blackhawks are, you know, just two really big solid lines and and just some you know gritty, you know, they can score some goals on the third and fourth line. And, you know, I think their only question is defense. You know, they've got Goligoski and Demers and Oduya, but you know, no really number one guy, no you know franchise defenseman yet. Um, but you know, you don't have to have one t- to you know compete. But I mean, winning the cup's gonna be hard. But I definitely think they'll they'll make a push for the playoffs. Yeah, I think the Central is going to be just a straight-up battle. I mean, St. Louis is going to be up there, obviously, with their big uh, signing of Tarasenko. They're going to fight it out. Uh, Chicago will be up there. Dallas will be up there. You know, and I wouldn't uh, count out Nashville, too. So, I mean, the Central and the Western Conference is, is, I think, going to be pretty crazy, Eddie. I think it's going to be a tight battle between all those teams. I I don't really think you can count too many people out in that division. No, and and it's always a tough division. You know, you, you expect it every year. Obviously, with Chicago winning the Cup, St. Louis every year, um, you know they expected to do good. Nashville was the uh, the big surprise, and and now with Dallas adding, you know all these uh, all these new players, it it's gonna be a tough division. It's gonna be fun to watch, and you know we're I'm kind of happy that we're not in it because you know, even Winnipeg making the jump forward, Minnesota and, and Colorado having an off season, but you know they're all gonna be good. You know somebody's not gonna make it from that division, and. It's hard to tell right now who who it is going to be because all of them could make it. Yeah, definitely. 
Um, shifting gears back to the Ducks, we've got more questions. Uh, we had Andrew asked about uh, the Ducks' third line. And, and, you know, we've talked about the lineups, and obviously it's a little early, and we'll kind of go into some depth about this. But he asked if the third line should be Sekach, Cogliano, and Raquel. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Eddie? Um, I don't know, because we when we talked about it before, the guys who can play left wing, there, there seems to only be four, um, unless somebody makes out a camp. It, it looks like Maroon and Haglin. Uh, then Cogliano and Sekac. So uh, Cogliano and Sekac playing on the same line, you know, then you've got to put a right wing on on the left wing, which, you know, I, I'm not sure they'd like to do. Uh, but we'll have to see. Like, I, I, I think Cogliano and Sekac are on separate lines. You know, we saw that Cogliano play fourth line minutes last year, which is, you know, pretty much like a third line B because of the way Bruce Boudreau rolls his line. So, um you know, I, we'll have to see. I, I think they're on separate lines. You know, Stewart probably plays right wing on that third line. Uh, Jackman or, or even Wagner on, on plays right wing on that fourth line. So I think that's something we'll more likely see. But you never know with Boudreaux. Yeah, and I think uh, we went back over this on the lineups, but just a kind of a refresher. You know, the biggest thing is really the first line. And from there going on, I, I think if they stick with Maroon on the first line with the Twins, then you probably see Hagelin on the second line with uh, Kessler and Silverberg, and that'll be your first two lines. And then you just have to go with three and four, which, you know, Bruce also likes to flop those lines around as far as in terms of ice minutes. Sometimes they, they both play, you know, equal amount or not too much uh, of a difference there. So I think you're right. Sekach and Cogs probably play in sec- separate lines. Um, you know, they probably play the left wing spots on the third and fourth lines. Um, unless, you know, Boudreaux decides to change it up and, and take Maroon out of that top spot. But uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, it, it all starts with the first line. I, that's what I really think, Eddie. And if they, if they like Maroon up there, I think it'll be fine. If not, then I think we open the door. And then there's a lot of options because then you could throw Sekatch on the first line, which we saw for a couple games. You could throw Haglin up there. Um, and then Cogliano would go, you know, maybe on the second line in that kind of a situation. So I think it's kind of going to be a wait and see game, Eddie. Yeah, I'm sure they'll they'll be building chemistry and in, in training and in, in, in preseason. We might see a little glimpse of, of some of the lines put together. But you know, I would expect Maroon to start on that first line, um, and, and Haglin on the second line, and then you know Sekach and, and, and Cogliano. Uh, depending on where they want to go, third or fourth line. So I, I think that's what we most likely see. But like you said, if Maroon, they don't like Maroon on that top line, you, know, you could see Sekaj up there. We saw him a bit up there last season. You could you could even see Cogliano up there. So you know, we'll just have to wait till the start of the season to see what they decide to do. And uh, another question we had uh, from Devin was about the Ducks. It's a long question, so I'll kind of paraphrase it. But it's about the Ducks being a physical team last year. And uh, the understanding of why the Ducks went out and got more tough guys. Um, and, you know, we talked about this before, Eddie. If you look at the, uh, the top guys in the Ducks now, if you look at Jackman, Stoner, Maroon, uh, Bieksa, and now Stewart, uh, they combined for 45 fights last year, which is the same amount the Ducks team had total last year. And now you've added, you know, O'Brien, who obviously you said is not going to play all the time. You've added McGratton, too, in there in the mix. So obviously it's going to be some you know fun times at the Honda Center, but uh, what do you think is the strategy? Do you think that the Ducks are purposely trying to you know get a Fight Club type of mentality back, like 06, 07? Um, or you think it's just maybe trying to build up the team, um, you know, minor league and in the NHL? Um, you know, I don't necessarily think they're just you know signing up tough guys. I think they're bringing in guys who fit the philo- you know the philosophy and the style that they play. You know, Stewart and BX aren't there to fight; they're to, they're there to play. You know, Stewart's gonna he's there to you know, to contribute to the offense and, and you know, play the four check that the Ducks like to play and, and BX is there to play solid defense and you know, occasionally they'll fight and that's just the, the, the way they are and the way they play the game. But I mean McGratton and, and Shane O'Brien, you know, the, they're pretty much by, brought here. McGratton's definitely brought here to brought here to fight and play in the fourth line. Shane O'Brien, you know, he's here to fill a role if somebody gets hurt or not playing well and, and play solid defensively but also, you know, scrap if he's if necessary. And I think you know, it, it's never bad to have some tough guys. Obviously, you know, you want more want guys like Stewart and Bieksa who who can do other things. But you know, in a tough Western Conference, you you know, you, you want guys who can stick up for, you know, guys like Silverberg and Haglin and even Perry and Getzlaff. You know, so I I think all in all, they're all good signings and definitely makes the Ducks team tougher. Yeah, I think the only reason why they probably have gotten some more of the, the tougher guys is not, not necessarily to go back in time to 06, 07, but I, I think part of the reason is, Eddie, is uh, 
you know, the Ducks could have beat Chicago, but um, I think that they're looking for, you know, long series next, you know, playoffs. If the Ducks are able to go through every series and win them in four or five games, it's not going to be a problem. But, you know, we know the reality of the NHL. Trying to win three series in a row, and, you know, in five games or less to get to the Stanley Cup is pretty, it's pretty damn rare and difficult. So I think part of bringing these players in is to, to match the physicality of, of other teams if we face them in the playoffs, uh, like Dallas that we did a couple years ago, um, obviously Winnipeg as well, but also to combat speed too. Uh, if you're going to play a team and you don't necessarily have the same amount of speed, you're going to need to slow them down as well, Eddie. And I think you know the best way to do that. It's not necessarily to get in fights because you know we don't see that as much in the playoffs, but you want to get that cycle established. You want to get that board check established, and you want to wear down the other team. And I think. Uh, that was kind of what was one element that the Ducks lacked in the last uh, two games against Chicago in the Western Conference Final. Yeah, and you know, it's just to to impose your will on a team as well. Just to, to know that that guy's out there on the ice and, you know, if you do something wrong, he's coming after you. It's, you know, that that's intimidating to teams. So, you know, that's, you know, the way they're going to go. And, and I, I don't think it's a bad move either. But, you know, Hagelin was brought in for speed and we thought maybe they would sign, you know, some faster players. But I think they've got enough speed, you know. Perry's not, you know, a quick guy, but you know he'll he'll beat you with his hands. And uh, Hagelin and Silverberg are really fast. Kessler's fast. Cogliano, Sekac, Raquel. You know, I, I don't think you need, you know, a whole team of, of quick guys. I think all together, the way it's built with a mix of both it is definitely the way to go. And and I I love what they've done so far. Yeah, I agree with you. I think the mix is the best way to go, and not try to go one way or another. And like you said, you know, uh, if a, a certain player's on a team. You know, you know you're not going to want to mess with them. And uh, we kind of mentioned this before, but you go back to the Mighty Duck days, and, I mean, there was Todd Ewan and Steve Grimson, and you knew if you were going to go run over Korea or any of the other players on the Ducks team, you knew that those guys were going to come after you. And, you know, it was effective. I mean, obviously it's a much different team and a much different style back then in the 90s, of course. But uh, it's, it's a similar um, thing that they're going to uh, do, and I think it's going to help. Um, it'll also create more, I think, room and opening for these speedier guys too, Eddie. Yeah, definitely. You know, they won't step up and, and you know try to lay a guy out anymore. They'll give him more space, and you know that that's uh, that's what the guys like Stewart and Bieksa and McGratton and Shane O'Brien, even Maroon, and you know those those are what the those guys bring. They bring the intimidation factor, and it'll be interesting to see how well it works out. Uh, the one other last question we had is from Adam, and he asked, uh, "Do you think there'll be any more moves uh, for the Ducks to make this off season?" Uh, probably not. I think seeing Oduya go off the board to Dallas and then Shane O'Brien coming in, I think, you know, if anything, it's a trade and, and I'm not saying it's going to happen. I, I still think that's very unlikely, but you know, any free, the free agents left, I, I, I think, you know, we've got all of our roster spots here. Signing a guy right now would be kind of pointless. There's no spot for any guy on the team. So, you know, if anything, it's a trade, but you know, well, who are we going to trade now? You're not going to trade anybody out of the top six, and you can't. You're not going to trade anybody you just signed. So, um, you know, there's not many players left uh, on that list. So I think they're done for now. And you know, if anything, the next move would be made at the trade deadline. Yeah, I agree. I, I think that w- with all the signings we've done this week, and then obviously the you know the impending um, ones with Silverberg and Hagen, which you know I, I would think would happen within the next week or so. I think the Ducks now have got the depth that they needed. Uh, You know, we were concerned about the center position, Eddie. We talked about that. Now you've got um, Horkoff in there, obviously Wagner and Raquel. They can fill out the bottom uh, two spots and take care of that. We were kind of worried about the wing spot losing people, but now we've got Stewart and Hagelin in there. So uh, that's going to take care of that situation. And even then also McGratton, too, to bring in in case you need another tough guy, uh, you know, uh, to replace Jackman, or even if they put both on there, if they're playing a real tough opponent. So I think the Ducks have backfilled all those spots like they needed to. They've obviously signed enough people down at the AHL, which I plan to go to some of those games because those are probably going to be a blast too. Um, because, uh, you know, just to touch on the goalie situation, I guess, for a little bit, I, I you know, it looks like Gibson uh, it might be in the minors uh, to start the season. Uh, you know, we thought he was going to battle out with Anderson, but it's kind of a tricky situation now with, uh, you know, Anton coming over in that trade. Uh, with Wisniewski, Eddie. Yeah, it'll be it'll be a really fun hockey to watch down there. You know, Nick Ritchie will be there, Shea Theodore, Manson, Cordillis, Gibson will be down there. So they're going to be a really good team, and and I like the approach that they've gone. You know, it's almost the uh, 
the Detroit Red Wing approach, and you know you let the the younger guys sit in the minors for a little bit longer, let them develop, and and you know they end up you know benefiting from it um, in the long run. So I think putting these guys down there is going to be really good, but it's gonna, it's going to be a great team down there. You know, Wagner's there, Scarbosa's there. Like I said, Richie, Cordillis, Freiburg, Theodore, Montour, Nason, Sorensen, Gibson. It's going to be a, a really good team to watch, and you know, a lot of guys who could get a couple call-ups in the season as well. Yeah, I mean, can you say Calder Cup bound or what, Eddie? Yeah, you know, the, there's not many teams out there right now who who can compete. Obviously, um, the Monarchs won um, this year, and you'd expect to see most of those guys back with the Monarchs next year, which is LA's um, uh, team. <laughs> so it'd be it'd be fun to see the the Monarchs and and you know San Diego play in in a Calder Cup final. It'd be a, a nice little rivalry. Yeah, definitely. I, I plan to catch some of those games as well. And everybody else, you, you know, if you live in that area, you know, we have some riders that are down there. Uh, we'll be covering uh, San Diego, too, uh, on our website and whatnot, uh, which is also going to be updated. It's in the process now. I've got a lot of stuff going on, but uh, we'll have a new website up for you uh, before the season starts for sure, uh, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. So that's one update we, we have for you from, you know, our end as far as the website and podcast uh stuff that we've got going on and also with the team um the scoreboard is going to be coming up soon uh i know some of you went to the la kiss game and you saw the the speakers were put up and from what i'm hearing uh i talked to brian hayward uh, about a week and a half ago uh, he was saying that it was going to be about 30 feet high and 20 feet wide um and it's going to look really good uh you know i've even seen a, a mock-up of what it looks like i, I can't reveal that photo <laughs> right now just because of you know confidentiality issues with uh, some of those the people on the team but uh hopefully i'll be able to get um some kind of image out there for you soon and uh, we're going to have a really good scoreboard and sound system improved for next season which is going to be great eddie and uh, uh for everybody that's going to come down there um that's really it for this week. Uh, no, no other updates. Anything else you want to share, Eddie? No, pretty much a, a slow week in the NHL, like we'd expect. Getting into the dog days of the summer, where not much is going to happen. You know, all the big names are are pretty much signed in free agency. So you know, we'll see a couple other guys get signed near the end of the of July and maybe into the beginning of August. But other than that, you know, everybody's pretty much signed, and you know, we'll just have to wait until October. Yeah, and is it October yet? I mean, really, let's let's get this going. But uh, yeah, um, you know, we'll be doing shows still. Also, the next couple of months, we may skip a week here or there, depending on what's going on. But uh, obviously, we'll be bringing you updates whenever they're available. And uh, also, make sure to uh, like our Facebook page, uh, facebook.com/slash Ducks and Pucks blog. On there, we've been giving away T-shirts. Um, throughout the week and uh, just stay on to uh, up to date on there we'll get you all the information on the ducks and thanks for your support see you in a week